Yes, people have done this conversion before or done this type of project before, mostly for race cars because it's a lot easier. But what I want to do is I want to build it so that it looks like BMW could have built it, but it performs like Turner built it. Given our roles and skill set that we have, I feel with me trying to manage the job, I have Brew kind of the brains behind most of the operation and making sure that he knows why one part's going to interact with the other, and then Kim's skill set of trying to figure out how he's going to make you know, Bruce's vision work within the vehicle. How is this engine going to sit in there? Well, that's Kim saying, I got to fabricate these brackets to make sure that this engine is going to sit where it needs to, to have the hood clearance that we need to. Kim's going to spend a lot of time in that fab room figuring out how that works. And then Will's going to walk downstairs and say, I don't like the way that looks. And I'm going to say, well, what do you want me to do? Busy week coming up. I think but a lot of things are going to fall into place. Um, Kim's got to have the shift linkage done. Yeah, yeah, I think there were a lot of challenges with the space um, in there. It's, it's much less space than uh, on the E92. Uh, I know that um, Turner Parts Company has a really cool um, shifter, so yeah. we can probably customize the, the, the length of the throw with that too if we need to. Uh, subframe, I mean, while we're waiting for all the other things to fall into place, um, what we do all the time is the, uh, the rear subframes. Yeah, uh, we know that's not a problem for, for Kim. He's kind of the expert with that, so... Rob, just relax. I am very hungry. <laughs> just relax. You're always hungry. I am always hungry, and I'm gonna get hangry if I don't get my food. It fell apart. Look at how he holds a taco. Terrible. Turn a corn. Turn a corn. <laughs> We're headed down, headed down to Desktop Metal now. Gonna check out their capabilities, meet meet the guys, and see how they may be able to, to help us with their technology and their manufacturing capabilities. We figured that a lot of engineers don't really have any idea how to um, design parts to take you know advantage of 3D printing. They know how to do machine parts, right? And they know how to do cast parts, mm -hmm. but they don't know or even injection molded parts, but 3D printing is so new. So we built this product to generate the shapes of parts, and I'm gonna focus on this skateboard assembly. We have this skateboard truck here, and it looks kind of funky, and that's because we've designed it using live parts to take advantage of the, the fact that we can create material in places that you wouldn't expect it to be lighter and stronger. And when I talk about the term grow, what I mean here is that we simulate the process of creating a part the way nature grows things. Nobody sketches a tree, right? It just, yeah. So we thought in nature, things happen very organically and based totally on function. And, and so in the same way that a plant grows from a seed towards the sun and the water, our live parts grow from the fixed regions out to the areas that are forced. And this creates a part that is basically driven by the stress and strain that it feels, and it becomes stronger only where it needs to. Obviously, you don't want to make a part that's bent, and so live parts is going to create the geometry now that is better for actually 3D printing. So this is the kind of thing you can do with live parts, is you can interactively grow your parts to have different loads, different materials, and different build constraints on how you're going to print it. And then it gives you the geometry automatically. You bring it back and put it in your assembly, and off you go. Cool. Pretty sweet. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Every time I see it, it's like a, I just get blown away every time. Sorry. The guys at Desktop Metal are awesome. They ran through their software and how their 3D printers work. And honestly, I'm super excited. The stuff that they can do is honestly pretty impressive. And I think they actually might be the solution to come up with some parts that are truly unique and that will you know, work for the challenges that we have to overcome. The challenge was to get a uh, shifter in here that would fit with both the chassis and the transmission. Just to get it to work is a good start. Okay, yeah. So this one should push it a little further back. I'll make the shifter go a little further forward. All right, let me try the other linkage because that doesn't fit quite where it should go. The, the chassis is different on it, so the tunnel was higher up, so I needed to get rid of, I needed this to be flat, basically. I needed to get rid of the elevation change on this, uh, on this piece. So we cut this up, and we ended up with something like this. 
So we took the we took the drop out of it and welded it back together so it's nice and flat so it would work with the chassis and the transmission. So then we, we need to shorten a shift linkage to also work in the same space. It's very tight in there. The drive shaft, uh, the drive shaft Guibo is much bigger than the stock one. So trying to get all these pieces to fit in a very small space was, uh, was challenging. But I think we're at a point where it works pretty good. So I'm going to put it together and then uh, try it in the car, see how it, uh, see how it works. Right now, I think I can, I can hit all the gears and like it feels good on top. It's not like super short, but I think it's a good, uh, it's a good start. I can make changes once it's, you know, once everything is working to kind of finalize it. All right, so check this out. I've made some adjustments on it and it feels so good. Like it's, it's short and crisp. Uh, but without being too tight, it's like dead in the center. It, it feels amazing. It's, it's very like, smooth. It's just right there. It, it's, it's so nice and tight, but without being like forceful, it's, it's really good. No, it's a great height. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it can get much better than that. Every E46 needs a rear subframe um, reinforcement and or floor fix. When was the first one you did? 2000. 9 2010 it wasn't right after because i think the dealer was doing a bunch of them they were they were cracking and people were seeing the crack somehow and they were trying to fix them at the dealership but they had a weird they had a weird like glue thing or yeah they fill they, them with foam fill them with foam yeah 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 the kit's awesome i mean we we designed that kit and stamped that kit that has to be one of the best selling turner parts that we've ever done yeah so we're doing solid mounts, camber arms, turner camber arms, turner sway bar. We are doing the mono ball, uh, trailing arm bushings, um, and we're doing a built dip. So basically, all, all turner parts, stuff on that, right? We're removing the subframe to reinforce the floor, the floor where the subframe is attached, because that's a weak spot in this car. We found a small crack in the left rear mounting point of it, and on the chassis, it's a weak point. So once we removed it, we reinforce the floor so it can take the stress that the subframe puts on it. Then the actual subframe itself we remove and then replace the parts that we're keeping stock and then updating the parts we're replacing. We are removing and upgrading the subframe mounts. It's a big rubber mount. We're taking the rubber out and going solid with just a solid aluminum mount. Yeah, I love these things. So you kind of got to be nice to it and it will go into place. We've done a lot of these and we've done several different combinations. We've gone all solid, we've gone, you know, solid subframe, solid diff, and tried to find the best combination. And what we come up with is basically what we're doing to this car. We're putting solid subframe mounts in it, but keeping the diff mount stock. The diff mounts in these cars are there, there's very little rubber in it. You do want some rubber between the diff and the subframe, because if you don't, all the vibrations from the drivetrain trans transfers into the car and it just makes, it, it doesn't ride nice. It doesn't, it doesn't feel good when you do that. So this is kind of a perfect combination of, you know, upgrades, but still keeping the car very drivable and, and keeping that like that stock feel to it, but having you know a much more aggressive setup. You don't want the subframe shifting around. You don't want all this movement in parts that shouldn't move. The reinforcement kit was developed by Turner. And this is back in the day, going probably back 12, 13 years. Every 46 that comes in here gets checked to see if it's cracked. We have done countless of these. Every component on that subframe is now upgraded. It's either new stock or, or an upgraded performance part. It's basically a brand new subframe. It's really fun to get to work with all these performance parts. Getting to not just replace like one or two parts, but getting to do a complete overhaul is, 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 is really cool. You put in a motor, it doesn't belong into another chassis. You have very little space. You want something strong that doesn't take up a lot of room. Man, this is perfect. This is what growing apart is for. So I'm really excited about Desktop Metal. They were super excited about coming up and doing this because this is an amazing project. Some of them are a little bit car guys, some of them aren't. But when we talked to them about this, 
I mean, they're all excited because this is not making a little widget that you're never going to see again. We have our own mini startup within the company called Live Parts. With Live Parts, it's a really innovative new way to create the geometries that you see today by actually creating reference geometry instead of modeling all of the information in between with your CAD programs or anything like that. You now define those limitations and then we have an algorithm that has been developed that will actually organically grow the geometry in between. So it's really kind of a, an innovative way to, to think about 3D design, and really the sort of direction that we see a lot of things going for the future. There's a lot of geometry and stuff involved in there to, to really uh, get everything to fit. But one major thing with this car is that we want to be able to fit the headers and the engine mount in a way such that it doesn't affect the steering column and that kind of thing. Uh, what we were trying to do is scan the engine and the interface between the where the exhaust ports are and the engine mount so that we can get it in and around this area without affecting that overall space. It's kind of an uncharted territory for us as well as the automotive parts world. It's a technology that has been tested and tried and, and works, but you know, I, I don't think it it's really been applied to the real world and put in a scenario where it's gonna be really put to the test. This is gonna allow us to build a smaller engine mount and give us more room for the exhaust. And what do we need? I mean, the number one thing we need is more room for that exhaust so it doesn't hit that steering shaft. We're kind of still talking about what we're doing with the diff. The stock limited slip unit in the E46 M3 is somewhat of a weak point. We wanted to upgrade the limited slip unit. At the same time, we wanted to go with a more aggressive gear ratio. But I'm gonna leave the diff out for now until we get that addressed. Been working on some headers. These are really cool. So basically, you just they just snap together like Legos. It's kind of fun. <laughs> I'm excited to see the uh, the suspension. I think the suspension they picked for this car is like the greatest, uh, the, the best setup you can choose for these cars. Desktop metal stop by this week. We were able to get our first glimpse at an my first glimpse at an actual engine mount that we could be using. Are these mounts hitting the motor mount, the rubber motor mount? So when I try to move that up. Yeah, it doesn't, just won't go. Something ain't right? Something is tight.